From our studios at the corner of 8th and Walton in Bentonville, Arkansas, welcome to Saturday Morning Meeting. Brought to you in part by Dun & Bradstreet Credibility Corporation, the leading provider of credit and credibility solutions for businesses. Saturday Morning Meeting covers Walmart, Sam's Club, and the consumer product companies that are represented on the racks and shelves throughout the country and around the world. I'm Derek Reidenauer, and our focus is on the insights, trends, and best practices to help you as a supplier grow your business with the world's largest retailer. Thank you for joining us, and coming up today, I'll be talking with Julie James of Hillshire Brands and Paul Martirano of the GHP Group about making the most of seasonality. And reviewing this week's top news stories with me are Jeff Amarine and Andy Weissman. First, the headlines. Walmart posted its first quarter report this week, and to nobody's surprise, the news wasn't great. Forbes.com reports that earnings were only 0.8% higher than last year. Share value dropped 3% following the news. Walmart blames unseasonably cold and disruptive weather for its slow sales. At its recent event with President Barack Obama, Walmart announced a renewed commitment to solar power. Bill Simon, president and CEO of Walmart U.S., stated that the company will double its solar projects at its U.S.-based stores and distribution centers by 2020. Reuters reports that Walmart suffered a setback in its efforts to dismiss a lawsuit brought by shareholders. The lawsuit stems from the Walmart Mexican bribery scandal of 2012, after which some shareholders argued that Walmart did not take timely steps to address the situation. Walmart asked that the federal court system to dismiss the lawsuit, but the court has recommended against dismissal. This recommendation is subject to review by a U.S. Circuit, circuit Court judge who will make the final decision as to whether the case can proceed. CNN reports on a recent survey suggesting that many consumers don't see Walmart as collaborative when deciding on product offerings. One analyst suggests that this may be a matter of perception given that Walmart Labs in emphasis on social media interaction and other consumer outreach programs such as Get on the Shelf. Walmart is banking on sales of summer items to boost profits this year. According to 24-7 Wall Street, seasonal offerings include $33 swimsuits, which have been featured in Oprah's magazine, as well as bargain prices on outdoor furniture. One analyst at 24-7 Wall Street remains concerned, however, that consumers are still financially strapped and may simply not have the money to spend on summer products, even if they are sharply discounted. Check out Walmart and Supplier News as it's reported at walmartnewsnow.com. And hey, we're joined now by our panel, Jeff Amarine from the University of Arkansas and Andy Wiseman from Redwood Ventures. Welcome, guys. Hey. Bad news for Walmart this week. Sales are down. I don't know if anybody was really surprised by that. Jeff, we'll start with you. Thoughts on it? Yeah, I know. There's a tendency to blame a lot of these things on the weather. Uh, it's a cyclical business, and there's no doubt that that might have had some impact as well, but you never know. It could just be the economy is a little slow to recover, more slow than what we thought. Well, I mean, I, I agree. I think uh, as, as Walmart's business, as we look at it, it's just a clear reflection of the U.S. economy more than anything. Uh, uh, the media and, and people who write about Walmart love to talk about Walmart's failed strategies and, and blame a, a lot of various factors on them not being able to keep up with Amazon or whatever it might be. But In the, stocks or out of stocks, uh, whatever yeah, the case But the be. fact of it is the U.S. economy continues to struggle. Politicians want to tell us it's great, but, you know, the, the indications are, are clear in what Walmart's well, delivering. Well, specifically the demographic that's mm. most served by Walmart, right? I yeah. mean, you're talking yeah. about middle class and lower middle class mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. If they don't have the money to spend, they're not going to be at Walmart spending their money. Yeah, and I think, there. and if, if, if this was not just related to the U.S. economy, in other words, if Walmart was dropping the ball in a lot of ways here, I think that we would have seen, for example, in the fourth quarter when Target was so far off, a 46% decrease in revenue. Right. It's just a huge hit. Walmart should have benefited from that. They didn't. And it'll be interesting to see what Target reports in a couple of weeks when they announce their earnings. And, and I don't think there are going to be any surprises. I think they're going to be down as well. I think the economy continues to struggle. Is there anybody that <clears throat> seems to jump out at you now, any retailer that, that seems to be having a great year so far? I mean, you, you work with well, multiple Amazon. Retailers. Some people say that Amazon's going to do $100 billion this year, depending on who you read and who you believe. Uh, Toys R Us, who we work with very closely, appears to be having a fair uh, year, <laughs> if, you know, get, considering, for, for but Toys R Us. yeah, for, you know, they have some strategies they're employing that are, that are pretty remarkable. I think Amazon is clearly kind of leading the pack in terms of growth, but I think we have to realize that they're a relatively small part of the retail market still. Yeah, and on the other side, you see mm. J.C. Penney and Sears is still kind of a death watch for those guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. are they going to make it at all? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, again, and then there was some concern that I read this week that what happens to malls when those anchor stores are no longer anchoring 
And what happens to them? Do they go out? Mm -hmm. who, who comes in and, and takes that place? That's a good point. There's, there, I heard maybe the same report that there's going to be significant reduction in the number of malls. They think the A malls that are, that are uh, new formats, open air, kind of like what we have over at Pinnacle, that, right. that might, those will be fine. But the historical mm -hmm. covered malls, the old format, they're going to really struggle. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see. Okay, I want to move on to another article that was released this week indicating that Walmart is probably the least collaborative company uh, out there. They've got very low, rain, low mm -hmm. marks. I personally found this surprising, having been at Walmart and ran a, a store DM hotline where we took calls from people all the time. Andy, your thoughts? Uh, I, I found the uh, article a little bit ignorant, frankly. <laughs> uh, Walmart is accountable to shareholders. We know this. They're, they're accountable to the media, and they want to protect this public image that they have. But Walmart is, is more accountable to consumers, to their shoppers, than anybody else. And uh, Walmart collaborates with their consumers by changing assortments, by making sure that there's relevance uh, in terms of what's carried in specific stores. And we know this because right. of trading and the way that Walmart will implement store of the community strategies. Walmart reaches deeply down into certain markets to meet the needs of consumers in those markets. They listen very clearly. And they, they do a lot of store unique modulars. Mm -hmm. where liquor, for example, mm -hmm. there are 1,600 store unique modulars for mm -hmm. liquor. So being, I, I see them being very reactive. Yeah. Jeff? Yeah, I would agree. I, I, I think they're very scientific about how they do shopper insights. I think they work with a lot of the brands in that regard. I think there's a lot of automation as well. Maybe they don't do focus groups, but focus groups are, are a, a modality that was useful in the 1990s. That's gone. That's not the way to get a real view of what's going on across a large population. I see focus groups more as for the manufacturing side in terms of color schemes and what works for this right. product to sell this product. When you get into a retail environment, 150 million people a week are in a Walmart store. You're not going to make all of them happy. Right. But when you look at RI data and you look at Walmart sales data, I mean, we've been in buyer meetings, the customer votes. And what they <laughs> vote for in terms of spending their dollars on is what's going to stay on the shelf. We yeah, use right. the phrase testing every day. We're testing every day, whether we like it or not. And we're looking at, at retail sales numbers to understand how to change and drive our business. Walmart gives you a clearer snapshot of your business via retail link than any other retail and trust me we use everybody's systems and nobody gives you more consumer insights than Walmart. Well, I know we, we do a lot with clustering. Mm -hmm. The buyers do a lot with clustering mm -hmm. so take a demographic, take a, a particular group of stores, could uh -huh. be all over the country, where your products will, will seem to do the best mm -hmm. and I have yet to see that with any other retailer. Mm -hmm. The ability to do direct store, uh, be able to get something in direct to the store I, again, I don't see that with anybody else. You go to Target and ask if they can cut something in. No. Mm -hmm. Minneapolis says no, we're not doing it. You go to Walmart, yes, they can bring mm -hmm. it in. And a lot of that's a reflection of the store management as well. They've got a lot of autonomy to call some right. of the shots and to tailor what's going to work best in the community that they're serving. And I actually see them under Doug's leadership. I would almost expect that that would become more, pre more predominant. It mm -hmm. was uh, several years ago. They, they kind of got away from it. I see it coming back stronger than ever. Yeah. All right, we've got about a minute left, two minutes left. I wanted to get into the solar power, uh, Jeff, which I know is kind of dear to your heart. Sure. Uh, the solar power that uh, Walmart is kind of moving to, mm -hmm. particularly in California and the West Coast. Well, it's, it, one of the things that's really interesting is it appears that Walmart is the largest consumer, the largest commercial user of solar power. And that's a fantastic extension in many ways of the, the, the motions that Lee Scott took several years back to get this thing moving. And by virtue of that, when you've got a large commercial player like that, they're going to drive down the cost of solar on a per kilowatt hour basis. So I think you'll see more of that. Where it makes sense to deploy it, and it's, there's economic justification, they're really changing the way solar power is getting delivered in the U.S., and that's pretty powerful. I hope that's that the right. billion dollars that Walmart expects to save by using renewable energy over the next several years will be passed on to consumers because then we'll all win. Be so they reinvested in the price, yeah. keep the prices lower. Oh, yeah. Could also benefit in terms of mass production on solar panels. Mm -hmm. Maybe those become residential as well. Yeah, and you kind of wonder if they deploy it as the technology improves, which inevitably will, it's a silicon-based technology. As that improves, they may end up being a commercial power provider as well. They've got all that distributed on the rooftop. You never know. That might be the next thing. Could be another revenue stream for Walmart. Absolutely. I know we'll be talking about how they, their overall profits are up instead of down like we started off the segment. Sure. All right, guys, thank you very much. Stay tuned because Saturday morning meeting will continue right after this.
Every day, shoppers are bombarded with traditional brand messages outside the store in hopes that these marketing dollars will drive in-store sales. Closure Media drives retail sales by connecting brands with 95 million Walmart shoppers per year while they are in the store. Through innovative programs at Walmart's photo and money centers, Closure Media converts Walmart shoppers to purchasers of your brand. With reported redemption rates up to seven times the national FSI average, Closure Media drives sales. For more info, visit us at ClosureMedia.com. Discover our revolutionary lotion-infused body wash, New Dial Vitamin Boost, and wrap your skin in nourishing softness. For healthy, soft skin, people will notice. Dial. Healthier skin, healthier you. 8th and Walton, the premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current, accurate, relevant, taught by suppliers for suppliers. 8th and Walton. K-Stack, the leader in collaborative retail consolidation programs. We offer the supply chain expertise needed to navigate the challenges of selling products with the world's largest retailers. And we provide customers with a customizable, scalable, environmentally sustainable supply chain with the same advanced technology typically used by larger rivals. By leveling the playing field, K-Stack lowers distribution costs and increases overall margins. K-Stack, retail logistics is what we do. So where does your water come from? Beaver Water District pumps and treats drinking water for the cities of Bentonville, Fayetteville, Rogers, and Springdale. Three other utilities also serve the region surrounding the lake. Visit Beaver Water District's website at bwdh2o.org for information on what the lake and its watershed means to us all. Beaver Lake, you drink it every day. I would recommend Eighth and Walton to other suppliers because from my experience talking to other suppliers, they were even learning new ideas or just new and better business practices. Most people have little time for training and so Eighth and Walton is a perfect opportunity to send your new employees to understand the retailing system and again because trainers were suppliers, they know the how and the why so they become very valuable very quickly. And welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting. We're joined now by Paul Martirano of GHP Sales Group and Julie James, Category Team Lead for Hillstar Brands. Welcome, guys. I want to start off, and we're going to talk about seasonality, but let's explain what seasonality is. And Julie, I'll let you kind of take that ball. Okay, yeah. Seasonality is really defined by a particular product or category. So depending on which time of the year something may peak or not, could be driven by holidays, events, those sort of things. So whatever it is, that thing that makes your product peak, that is what you would call seasonality. So like eggs at Easter and turkeys at Thanksgiving. Yep, exactly, yes. All right, well Paul, well, I'm gonna go come to you because you're in the outdoor living category, uh, whether it's furniture and more the heaters and, and mm -hmm. grills. Let's go into to that seasonality because that's gotta be somewhat challenging because it's kind of weather driven. But how do you plan for that when you have a, a harsher winter or a, uh, a mild winter? Actually, it's hard to plan for the weather. We can't control the weather. So what we try to do is do our best to accurately forecast the products and get the products in the right place at the right time. And since you're, you're planning a long ways out, Julie, you're doing just the opposite, really. Right. Because yeah. your items are, are, are basically every day. Yeah, with food products, yeah. I mean, we, we plan ahead in understanding when those trends and seasonality peaks so we got to work with, and you know, Walmart works six months in advance. So it is making sure you have your ducks in line and, you know, things are ready to ship when they need to and forecasting extremely important. And I'm sure likewise for you, um, forecasting can be hard when it comes to seasonality and hot dogs, for example, not knowing when summer's going to hit across right. the country. So thinking about really the zones across the country when certain parts get warmer than others and then and parts stay in really cold, like uh, what Colorado, three three feet but, of snow. But this you week. can't produce a year out of it. You're producing meats. You're right. No. So you've got to, and you may plan yes. and plan for those features six mm -hmm. months, even a year out. He has to plan and produce it, right? Yeah, very you, different. Yeah, we're actually, you know, in our inside of the house products or in the outdoor living. That's driven by trends. So we're working on those products eighteen to twenty-four months out. Uh, the implementation part of it might be six to eight months, 
but we have to bring products based on the trends that we find in the furniture industry, outdoor living products, et cetera, to the buyers, you know, to bring items to them to sell. You're just the opposite, right? Hot dogs, yeah, meat. That is true, but uh, you know, you hit on a great point as far as trends are concerned. So while it's not fashion oriented, we don't necessarily color the hot dogs. <laughs> um, <laughs> we uh, we um, do though look like flavor trends and that sort of thing. So understanding when those are the appropriate times to hit and um, different things like that, that would be how trending applies to food. And your seasons, Paul, because I know having been at Walmart that 4th of July really is kind of the Christmas season for barbecue grills in particular and patio furniture. So you either have it by then or it's all going to markdowns. How important is it for you to have, and for consumers really, to understand when to go get those products and those items? I mean, obviously you want them shopping earlier, but the problem you have, Julie can order more, more hot dogs and more meats and get those in in a relatively short time. Mm -hmm. They need them. That's a great you point. Don't, you don't have that opportunity, right? That's a great point. On, on our seasonal products, you know, our forecasting, we have to hit a number, and that is all that we're basically producing for that season. So we do need to get sell through going as soon as possible. And you know, we do that by offering a uh, tremendous value on the product. It doesn't have to be a rock bottom price, but it has to be you know, a good value for the quality of product. It's a seasonal product. Most of them are needs. There are some you know, products that are impulse, but uh, you know, these are products that people rely on on a seasonal basis, and uh, they're, they're specifically looking for uh, a solution. And you, you only ship a certain number of each SKU to stores. Obviously, depending on size, depending on traffic, there are different factors. But there's a fine, my point is, there are only a certain number of grills you're gonna send into an individual store, unlike Julie, who can ship in right. cases of it because it is an everyday item, so sure. short window. Certainly, you know, we do have uh, domestic backup of a lot of our products, so if it's a direct import product, you're correct. It goes in, it gets distributed out. All the items are restockable, but there is a finite amount of inventory. So once again, it's about hitting the right amount. So for a shopper, my best choice and best assortment will be at the beginning of the season. So while it, I may not be, I may be hesitant about what I want to have, my best choice of assortment for your grills, for example, are going to be at the beginning of the season, right? I would expect that at the consumer level, that is the expectation. Mm -hmm. That being said, the expectation at the Walmart level is that I have product to supply that entire season until the, mm -hmm. till the day it closes right. down and moves to the spring. We are going to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Paul Moderano from GHP and Julie James from Hillshire Brands. A Saturday morning meeting continues. Imagine what it would be like if you knew the weather up to a year in advance. What would you do differently for your business or your life? At Weather Trends, we don't imagine it, we do it. We're a team of meteorologists, mathematicians, and business weather advisors. And we've spent the last 20 years developing a new way to forecast months in advance. We've been studying weather's effect on product sales based on every one degree change in temperature. We can now take your sales data and show you exactly how the weather impacts your business down to a single degree. We're leading the way into a new era in forecasting and a new power in business decisions. And we invite you to join us. Welcome to Weather Trends. You know, the biggest challenge of working with Walmart is they really expect everyone on the team to know their language, know their terminology, and know exactly how they do business. So that's where Ethan Walton really comes into play. You know, it's the fastest way to get my team members up to speed. Their business model is suppliers teaching suppliers. So when you come to Ethan Walton, you can count on having very experienced trainers who understand how suppliers work within Walmart, and they take advantage of that and incorporate that into their curriculum. Beaver Lake serves as the drinking water source for one in seven Arkansans. Did you know that your actions can impact the quality of water in Beaver Lake? The Beaver Watershed Alliance is working to proactively protect, enhance, and sustain the water quality of Beaver Lake. With the help of partners, volunteers, and people like you, the Alliance is making a difference in Northwest Arkansas. 
Please learn more about your role in preserving the water quality of the Beaver Watershed and about how you can get actively involved. Visit beaverwatershedalliance.org. Beaver Watershed, our environment, our health, our home. Bentonville Plaza, across the street from the Walmart home office. The best office location for businesses working with the world's largest retailer. Bentonville Plaza offers proximity and services like no other business complex in the area, including custom designed suites and an on-site fitness center and restaurant. Pre-leasing opportunities are currently available for new construction. Call 479-200-1112 today. Are you a single parent struggling to meet your family's needs? Single Parent Scholarship Fund is here to help. Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas helps hundreds of single parents get an education. By providing scholarships and support, a brighter future is right around the corner for you and your family. We should know, in 2007, I graduated with my bachelor's degree in organizational management. Single Parent Scholarship Fund helped make my dream a reality. My kids are so proud of me, and now they declare themselves as college-bound. And welcome back to Saturday Morning Meeting. We are continuing our conversation with Paul Moderano from GHP and Julie James from Hillshire Brands. Now, before we went to break, we were talking about the seasonality and what it is, but I wanted to move into the dot-com area because obviously, Paul, that's a big category for you and something that can be advantageous to consumers as well as to you. So how, do you, how is dot-com different from the brick and mortar? That's a real exciting part of our business uh, in the seasonal side. There's a limited amount of real estate in the stores for Sam's and Walmart. So what we found is that we can bring the entire category online and offer that to the customers. And so on a heater, I might only have two items in the store. I can have 20 heaters. I can have as many grills as I want. So a customer has a complete shopping experience. In addition to that, our products are a lot bigger. And what we found uh, on these is People like them delivered to their door. So we are, we're actually benefiting from that. Also, it extends the season. I can sell heaters in the summertime online right. where I, I don't have that opportunity in the store. Once again, once the season closes out in store, it's gone. And Julie, for you, any dot-com business? It's a little hard ordering yeah, me. Uh, really for us, uh, the, the online is really fine in store. So, um, but you know, hey, it triggers an opportunity for to remind people about seasonality. We talked about a little bit trends earlier. You know, it gives the opportunity to kind of advertise new flavors, new things to get in the store and be a little excited about. Um, but from a seasonality standpoint, we pretty much got the store, you know, brick and mortar options. Um, but hey, the more grills he sells, the more hot dogs we can sell. <laughs> and so hopefully, the like more it. spices I can sell. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to talk with you, Julie, about the exit strategy because mm -hmm. if if Walmart orders a bunker for Hillshire Meats, yeah. and it's gonna go in for Memorial Day. Yep. They may very well plan that same bunker for one of your competitors for the 4th of July. So how do you how do you work with that exit strategy to get out of stock, or at least get your inventory down? Yeah, you know, that's really a critical piece. So supply chain at Walmart is, you know, kind of secret to success anyway. So being very adamant about tracking how things are selling, when we talked about seasonally, or I mean, um, cross zones in the, in the United States for Walmart. So it's really making sure that somebody has a really close eye on what is happening in the, um, as if, I guess it's related to the weather and right. the time in which you have to exit. So slowing down inventory as you come into the end of the season, and then of course the opposite would be ramping up as you come into the season. And Paul, what about you for exit strategies? Because in, in a store you have very finite real estate as we've talked about. How do you, how do you coordinate those, the kind of getting out of one and bringing another one in? It's definitely, once again, about having the right products at the right time and the right place. And uh, at the end of the season, obviously, if it's a heating season, you know, we're thinking about getting grills into the store, et cetera. So we've actually gone to a counter seasonal business approach where we're covering all four seasons um, with different product lines. And that also extends the, uh, the revenue stream across the entire year. And it maximizes our capacity utilization of our factories, which is really huge. But it really is all about, you know, having the right product in the right places. So at the end of the season in heating, you know, I want to make sure that those products um, that are selling well in the Northeast 
are in the Northeast okay. as we wrap it up. Because once that the season's done, we're done. Okay, we got about a minute left here, and I want to come back to you, Paul. What would you tell a supplier who may, if it's somebody who just switched from a year-round company where there's not a lot of seasonality and they just got into a supplier who has a lot of seasonality, uh, or a company who's finding out that their items have tend to have some seasonality, what are some things that you would tell them to really be aware of? Well, number one, that is uh, you have to really watch out for your cash flows. There's an, a tremendous amount of risk when, when all your products are sold through in a three to four month period. So you, you have to pay attention to that. Uh, I recommend that you also go into counter seasonal business once you own that seasonal category that you're currently in. Try to and, expand your season. Yeah, and then also keep in mind that uh, it might be a seasonal short term window of, of opportunity, but it's a 12 month a year job to run that small segment of business. And, and that, you know, Includes people, products, cash, et cetera. And Julie? And I would say um, just over communicate with replenishment at Walmart and your buyer. Making sure those people are in tune to what your plans are will make things run a whole, run a whole lot smoother. And understanding the ramp up period. Yeah, and, absolutely. And yeah. The exit strategy. All right, guys, thank you very much. Stay tuned. Saturday morning meeting. We'll be right back. GigWalk is an on-demand mobile workforce that can collect data and do work at retail. Businesses use GigWalk for retail audits, merchandising, and much more. With 350,000 smartphone-enabled workers available on-demand, you get unprecedented speed and coverage across the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. And all work is reviewed for quality and accuracy. Visit GigWalk.com to learn more. Experience the unique cooling sensation of frozen yogurt. New Dial Frozen Yogurt Body Wash. Wrap your skin in cooling moisture. For skin so refreshingly soft, people will notice. Dial. Healthier skin, healthier you. 8th and Walton. The premier destination for Walmart supplier education. When and where you want to learn. Current. Accurate. Relevant. Taught by suppliers. For suppliers. 8th and Walton. Did you know Beaver Lake is where our drinking water comes from? It just makes sense to keep trash and other waste out of the water. And to use the public restrooms that are provided. And to bag pet waste and put it in the trash. After all, if we don't take responsibility for our water quality, who will? Let's all do our part to give Beaver Lake a break. Are you a single parent struggling to meet your family's needs? Single Parent Scholarship Fund is here to help. Single Parent Scholarship Fund of Northwest Arkansas helps hundreds of single parents get an education. By providing scholarships and support, a brighter future is right around the corner for you and your family. We should know, in 2007, I graduated with my bachelor's degree in organizational management. Single Parent Scholarship Fund helped make my dream a reality. My kids are so proud of me, and now they declare themselves as college-bound. I would recommend 8th and Walton to other suppliers because from my experience talking to other suppliers, they were even learning new ideas or just new and better business practices. Most people have little time for training and so 8th and Walton is a perfect opportunity to send your new employees to understand the retailing system and again because trainers were suppliers, they know the how and the why so they become very valuable very quickly. Our thanks to Julie and Paul and today's panelists as well. As always, we appreciate you taking the time to join us. If you have questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. And be sure to join us next week when our featured guest will be Scott Morris. He's the co-founder of Fresh Pet. We're going to be talking to him about what happens when you have special product with special requirements for delivery and in-store setup, as well as the innovation of that product. I'm Derek Ridenauer from all of us at Saturday Morning Meeting. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll join us next Saturday morning.